Cracking down on drug traffickers is a main priority for the U.S. police force. So you can imagine what happens when cops accidentally bust major traffickers. Okay, how much marijuana do you have? It's probably about, uh, I don't know exactly, but I know it's over 100 pounds. Over 100 pounds? Yeah. Okay. Here are three police stops that lead to something much worse. On August 19, 2021, police noticed the white Toyota following too closely to a truck and attempted to pull it over. Once they activated their lights, the vehicle kept accelerating and then a white Infinity struck the cop's vehicle from behind. Neither of the cars stopped after the collision. What was that? Did that blow a tire? Did they throw something out? I don't know. What the f At first, the officer is confused as what happened until nearby road workers told the cops that it looked like a deliberate collision. I don't know what. Did I blow a tire, dude? Yeah. You were just driving over there. I was just freaking driving. Yeah, I just went to the city just started. Uh, we lost the vehicle. Uh, we 10 uh our vehicle. I don't know if I blew a front tire. The car that's behind him? Yeah. He was a blocker. Who yeah, was? The one, the one that was the floor. Did he hit me? With the floor tag? Yeah. Oh, it's a blocker. 742. Now the cops realize there is a much bigger problem on hand. I like that y'all broke y'all's name. That, uh, that's kind of, that car loaded. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. We need to go to I-40 East. I floored on the, uh, the California tag. California tag on that vehicle. I believe it's going to have a single male driver. Later on, it was discovered that the driver of the white Infinity was 26-year-old Monique Durell. However, it was the passenger, 31-year-old Kyle Wilk, who grabbed the steering wheel to strike the officer's vehicle. And the driver of the initial white Toyota was 35-year-old Ricardo Rodriguez. But it wasn't until the next day where cops located Monique's phone where she was driving a rental car traveling east. Lucky for the deputies, all three of the previous suspects were in the vehicle together and they were pulled over. This time, the cops are prepared and armed, ready for an intense confrontation. I got him. Back passenger, get out of the vehicle! Back passenger, get out of the vehicle. Hands up, show us your hands. Look who that is. Front passenger. Exit the vehicle with your hands up. Exit the vehicle! I don't care! I don't give a f Walk backwards! I'll get on the ground. Okay, lay on the ground. Take your shirt all the way off. The police successfully secure the vehicle and the suspects who try to play dumb. What's this all about? I mean, they were theory. You know what it's about? It's about what happened yesterday. Come on. I hit the cop. No, you didn't. I did. Uh, oh, I did. Right I was driving. I was driving. She had nothing to do with it. I drove her car. Hey. I'm dead ass serious. I know what happened. I hit the cop. Dumbass. Yeah. Who? Dude, you wouldn't turn around. I know. After searching the car, they uncovered seven bags of methamphetamine weighing 7.57 kilograms. I don't know who that one is. This has a very approximate street value of around two million dollars. They want us to put them in that cell, all three together? Well, he just asked that we take them to Shamrock yet and not get to Wheeler. Okay. So I don't know if he's planning on booking all three. <coughs> the female suspect, Monique, later told the police that the drugs belonged to Kyle and Ricardo. When asked about her travel plans, she changed her story several times. The three drug traffickers were sentenced to a total of 48 years in prison. Kyle and Ricardo pleaded guilty to intent to distribute meth and received 20 years in federal prison each. Monique also pleaded guilty and received eight years in federal prison. On February 2nd, 2022, an officer noticed a vehicle that wasn't driving normally. So the cop pulled it over suspecting a possible DUI charge. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. I'm Deputy Armeo with the Sployd County Sheriff's Office. Usually I'm stopping you. You're all over the roadway, man. You cross that white line on the left side of the road a couple of times. Well, I'm sure you're not drinking or falling asleep. Uh, no, I'm not. You all right? Yeah, I'm okay. Okay, you've been driving for a while? No, I just woke up this morning. If you get a step, step out for me, fall to my car. I'm going to give you a written warning. We'll get you on your way, okay? okay thank you. Yep. You just got to pay attention to the road, okay? Yeah, I'm sorry about no that. No worries, man. It happened. I just want to make sure you're safe to drive. I'm just going to give you a warning, okay? All right, sorry about that. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. But very quickly, the officer realized it is much more than a DUI. Where are you coming from? Uh, right there, uh, Flagstaff. Flagstaff? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I lost my driver's license, so I gotta use that. But I can give you my driver's license number. How's your trip going so far, man? It's going well. That's good. You having a good, been having a good Valentine's Day? I hope so, man. Or Super Bowl. <laughs> Who are you going for in the Super Bowl, actually? Uh, they go for the for the Bengals, man. Oh, yeah, me too. I'm going I'm, for the I'm a Niners fan, and then the Rams kicked us out, so uh, I, can't, I can't go for the Rams, I'm man. a Cowboys fan. Oh, man. <laughs> The suspect is seated in the cop's passenger seat, and he does an excellent job at calmly talking to the suspect into a confession. They say Joe Burrow is going to have a pretty exciting game because he's young, has nothing to lose. Yeah, he is, he's super young. Yeah, Matthew Stafford has all the pressure against him. You can literally see the man's heart pounding, as well as his very shallow breathing. His anxiety must have been through the roof, and you will find out later why. After some small talk, the officer addresses the elephant in the room. Okay, man, so one more thing before I finish this up, okay? When I made initial contact with you, now that I checked the bin on the vehicle, I got the order of marijuana coming from the vehicle, okay? okay. New Mexico is a recreational state. You can have up to two ounces of marijuana, okay? Yeah. How much marijuana do you have in the vehicle? Uh, probably like... Okay, be, okay let me tell you something, okay? Be honest with me. Mm. You didn't get stopped by the regular police, okay? You got stopped by an interdiction unit, okay? Yeah. And I know you're smuggling marijuana. Yeah. Okay. I know the back of that van right there is full of marijuana. All those bags right there? Yes. I can smell it. It's strong. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've been doing this for a while. Yeah, I'm, really, I'm very aware. Okay, how much marijuana do you have? It's probably about, uh, I don't know exactly, but I know it's over 100 pounds. Over 100 pounds? Yeah. Okay. Did you give me consent to search your vehicle? Yeah. Okay. The suspect admits to having at least 100 pounds of marijuana, and he begins to start nervously moving around. 10-4, could you see if uh, SPK9 is still stationary here at the 79? Driver advised that he has over 100 pounds of marijuana in his vehicle, just for 49. I'll be out with this vehicle. You can only imagine how he must have felt in this situation. Uh, is that where it can't be detained? What's that? Is that where it cannot be detained? Well, there's over 100 pounds of marijuana in the vehicle, okay? Yeah. So just answer this question for me. Do you understand your rights? Yeah. Can I understand your rights? Do you wish to talk to me? That was... Like, yes or no, do you want to talk to me about yes. this situation? Yes. Okay. So where are you coming from, man? I'm coming from California. California. Okay. Yeah. And um, are you just a driver, or you're, did you pick up this marijuana for I'm someone else? Are you, are you getting paid for it? No, I'm just a driver. You're just a driver? Yeah. Okay. Who are you, who are you working for? Uh, the guy on this, on this paper right here. You're on that paper right there? Yeah. How much are you getting paid to, to haul this marijuana? Uh, it's a pretty fair man. Like, Maybe like seven, eight thousand. Seven or eight thousand. The street value of the amount that he had was over one million dollars. So you're basically you're the mule. Yeah, that's what, what yeah. you're doing. Okay. How long have you been working for this uh, uh, drug not, trade organization? Not too long. What? Like two months. Two months. Mm -hmm. Is it a big organization? Uh, no, nah, no, nah, it's not. It's just small time people. Small time people. Yeah, nothing like nothing huge. Just but this guy's the main. Yeah, he's the one main of the guys. Guy. His vehicle is then searched and backup units are called. And uh, I'll search, search the vehicle and then we'll uh, go from, from there wherever I locate, okay? Okay. As you may or may not know, these people are at high risk from their bosses if they are ever caught. And especially if they give information to the police. Are you traveling with anybody else? Is anybody else following you or are you by yourself? By you're by yourself? Okay. So I just want someone to roll up on me while I'm doing this, okay? No, no, you're good. All too. right, man. Okay. As you can see, there are a lot of bags stuffed of marijuana. So you state the marijuana is not yours, correct? Yes, you're just transporting yes, it, okay? The amount you have here doesn't meet the threshold for me to charge you right now, okay? I'm going to get all your information, document everything, I'm going to forward it over to an agent, okay? I'm going to have you fill out this abandonment form. But you stay at the marijuana is not yours, you're abandoning the marijuana, okay? The backup officer arrives, who isn't as friendly as the first. Sir? A weed runner, huh? Is your boss going to be mad at you? Uh, I bet. Is he a big old drug dealer or what? Nah, uh, nothing not too big. Son right here. Was it already paid for? I believe so. Like I said, I don't know those details. I'm just the guy that takes it for them. So they already have the van ready to go for you? Yeah, they do all the logistics parts, and I just pick, them up, pick it up, take it whatever, and then take it to where I need to go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My suggestion to you is not to smuggle marijuana anymore, because you're not very good at it. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I can, I, I... You know what that amount is in 
fixed, we right? What? The amount of weed you have? How much? I'm a 10 to 20 years. No, I don't need that. I'm a good kid. I, I'm just trying to make a little money on the side. Since he was extremely cooperative, the suspect managed to be released. The federal threshold for prosecution is over 1,000 pounds worth. Since it didn't meet the weight, the drugs were simply seized and destroyed, and the suspect was released after questioning. Quick tip, don't speed when you're trafficking as much drugs as this guy. On the 10th of July, 2023, an officer's radar spotted a vehicle going 92 in a 75 mile per hour zone. The officer turned around and pursued the speeding vehicle. Not long after, the vehicle is pulled over. down the back window. Hello. Hey. Officer Rodriguez of Mexico State Police. The reason why I stopped you, man, doing 92 in the 75. If I could just see your driver's license, insurance, and registration, please. You don't have the uh, registration? Uh, it's fine. If not, it's fine. fine. The driver steps out of the vehicle and hands over a knife in his pocket. You? Okay. Give me, give me that. Anything else? No. Just keep your hands out of your pockets oh, for me, man. My little, uh, it's like a weed thing. Little. Okay, put it in your pocket. Let me just turn around. I'm just going to check you real quick. Turn around. And so I'm just going to give you a written warning, okay? Right, Slow yeah. it down. My bad. So, and where are you guys coming from? Uh, we're coming from Gallup. From Gallup? Yeah. What were you doing out in uh, Gallup? We were visiting my cousins. Like we're having oh, a big okay. get together like at my grandma's. We were supposed to just for the fourth, but now everybody made it. Um, while I'm up here, can I talk to you? Yeah. Can you give me, can you roll that window down? The other woman in the car is the driver's mother. What brings you guys to this part of New Mexico? Sorry? Get in the way? Nice. Where are you guys headed to now? Rancho. 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 What you guys got going on over there? Nice. Very subtly, the officer noticed that their stories didn't match up, as well as smelling an odor of marijuana coming from the vehicle. Yeah. Uh, if you get behind the wheel, just make sure to slow it down. We've been having a lot of crashes. I'm out here just trying to, so people see me, you know what I mean? Yeah. So take care, okay? Let's come over here. All right. How long were you guys in Gallup? Oh, we went on two days. Just two days? Yeah. Um, so before you take off, okay, I gotta address something real quick. Yeah. So in the car, I'm getting an odor of marijuana, okay? Have you guys been smoking no, in the car? No way. Okay. So have you guys had any marijuana in the car? Anyone smoking around it? Okay. Because you just showed me the THC. Look. Do you see like the thing right there? I don't have a battery to smoke. No, no, I, I get it. Like that. My, my mom does have a marijuana car. She has a marijuana car? Yeah, but okay. there's no way we were to smoke this. Did you guys smoke and then get in the car kind of thing? No, we haven't smoked at all. He claims the odor was because his mother has a medical card. However, he says that they haven't smoked any, which leads the officer to search the car. And the suspect tries his best to stop the officer searching it. He also denies the presence of any drugs in the car. So just based off that smell, I'm going to be searching the car, okay? Right. Is there anything illegal in the car? No, like, what's it called? Um, like, she has a medical marijuana card, so, like, technically, I'll come search, right? I'm sorry? She has a medical marijuana card, so, like... But the car still smells like it, and you're in possession of the car. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know, but, like... So, like I said, I'm going to search the car. Is there anything illegal in the car? No. Is there any large amount to U.S. currency? No. Over, like, $10,000? No. Perfect. Is Perfect. there any firearms in the car? No. No? Is there any methamphetamine in the car? Is there any heroin in the car? Is there any cocaine in the car? Yeah. Is there any fentanyl? In the car? Nothing like that. So the odor of the marijuana gives me probable cause to search a vehicle. And then you don't have any weapons on you or anything like that? Okay, so I'm gonna have you also go here to the side. Not as far as him, but you could probably hang out right here where it kind of opens up with can the I, weeds. Yeah, can I I'm searching the vehicle. I don't need permission. While he's about to open a very suspicious looking bag, both suspects claims he has no right to search the vehicle and begin to get very worried. Stay back over there, buddy. Stay back over there. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. I'm a task force officer with Homeland Security. That's a federal agency. I have probable cause to search a car. If you come any closer, you're going to be putting handcuffs. Do you understand? Not right now. Go to the 140 side. So like I said, I showed you my credentials and everything. So that gives me the authority to search the car based on that odor. Okay? 
But there was no odor in the car. I didn't smoke it in the car. Okay, but still, there's odor if it's coming from in the car. Doesn't matter if it, you guys, because he even showed me the THC cartridges that he has. In quite a strange taboo way, the officer offers to help the suspects out if the woman admits that there are illegal substances in the car, and she hints that there is. So, be up front with me. Is there anything illegal in the car? Not that I know of, no, there shouldn't be. Okay. So what are all the bags for? Those are all yours? Um, it's whatever you brought. Look, if there's anything in the car, I can help you guys out. I don't, I, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what you mean. Like, what do you mean? If there's anything there in there, that's not supposed to be in there, you know what I mean? We could try and help you guys out. Get that delivered to whoever it needs to go to, kind of thing. That's 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 what we can offer through Homeland Security. I'm not saying he does or he doesn't have anything to do with it, but you should go talk to him because, like I said, I don't know. Okay. Well, I'm gonna put you in handcuffs, okay? Because I don't want you running off. Upon talking to the driver, the cop explains how he can get out of the situation. We can help you if you're willing to do that. So if I just give you the wheel, will it be all right? Okay, so if you have something in there that needs to be delivered to somebody, we can help you get that delivered to you, to them. What do you mean? To help you out. Like, what do you because mean? the way it is right now, whatever you have in there, you're not looking at state charges, man. You're looking at federal charges. Notice how the officer already seems to know that there is illegal stuff in the car right from the beginning. I'm messing with you. I even I showed you my 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 credentials. Homeland what do you Security. Mean, what do you mean you're homeland delivered to them? That means we'll do a controlled delivery. We'll deliver it to them. Okay, we'll give them fake stuff and we'll take those guys down. We don't want you, man. We want the, the bigger guys on the chain. That's what we want. Do me one second, turn around. All right, fine, I'll do the controlled buying. Turn around, I'm just gonna get the, the THC thing out of your pocket. And I don't know, but usually when people cooperate, it lessens stuff for them so i'm that i'm just throwing it up in the air disguise as a hug the two discuss what they should do okay that's enough that's enough what, what are we gonna do yeah. you want to do it controlled okay have a seat and i need you to go down 20 feet have a seat they accept the offer and the vehicle is properly searched in the locked bag two handguns were located with an extended magazine and four blue pills. This is by no means the end of it. That amount, it's, it's not good for you guys solely, okay? Oh. The officer conducting the search pointed out the vehicle may have a tracker on it from the traffickers higher up. So they took the search elsewhere. The two suspects are taken to jail. During the search, a red duffel bag contained 24 bags of pills labeled 5,000 which were determined to be fentanyl. There was also a jar of marijuana, as well as a kilogram of heroin. Michael, the male suspect, admitted to doing three previous deliveries worth 20,000 each. The suspect's federal charges are not publicly available.